Welcome, everybody, to uh, Living Supernaturally with uh, yours truly, David Martin. And tonight we have just uh, a really great guest. And uh, I actually just got to meet this great man who is John Tussey. And uh, you can see him on the screen here, his big, uh, his big smile. And, uh, but anyway, I just got to meet John here uh, last week. We had uh, about an hour conversation together. But I had actually seen John on another uh, YouTube video, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you what, my spirit man was going bonkers with excitement as I heard uh, about his testimony, because most of you know that I was privileged to uh, uh, be mentored a little bit uh, in person by David Vancouvering, quantum physicist, and uh, John had a, a greater privilege than that and actually was trained, mentored and trained by David uh, Vancouvering to learn how to play the sounds or the music of heaven. So we're gonna have opportunity here. Um, John doesn't have quite an hour, so we'll use as much time as we can here for today to uh, learn a little bit about the music of heaven and, and how John does that uh, uh, from a natural and supernatural spiritual perspective. So. John, welcome to Living Supernaturally. Thanks, Dave. It is great to be here with you. And uh, it was really uh, cool to connect with you over the phone last week while I was in the airport. And uh, so now I'm here in uh, Seattle uh, en route to Alaska. And uh, thankfully had some time for us to uh, connect and do this uh, interview uh, this time together. I, I'm really grateful. Well, we are very, very much appreciative of your time here. And uh, so many questions, John, and uh, I know we're limited on time. But uh, you have been a musician for a long time. Give us a little bit of background to, you know, your history, your testimony, if you will, and how David Vancouvering came into the picture. And and uh, just before we went online here, uh, John was telling me a little bit about his meetings, and he's been in meetings, and would you say eight meetings in the last five days or so? Eight meetings within a nine-day period. Nine-day period. But one of the things John said to me, just he was, we were just about to go online, and, he, and I asked him about the meetings, and he said, the line of Judah came in. He saw the line of Judah come into every meeting. So before it's over, John, we, we want to hear about that. So we'll let people hang on that one for a moment. <laughs> and then okay. let's hear a little bit of, uh, of your story. I mean, uh, you know, where, where does it begin? And how does David Vancouver fit in? What are you doing? And I'll interrupt well, you. I, start, I, I started playing piano when I was six years old. And uh, I played by ear for 11 years. And then I got really serious with music and started to take lessons and took lessons for a good number of years. Got into classical music, got into a lot of piano technique. And I studied uh, with a man who educated me for a lifetime. He taught five instruments. His name was Albert Tioli. And he lived in North Wilmington, Delaware. So I would travel from South Jersey across the Dellen Memorial Bridge to go to take lessons. And out of that 10 years, I was going over there twice a week for four of those 10 years. And so I studied uh, not only piano with he and his wife, but I studied um, theory and contemporary music. I mean, contemporary harmony and traditional harmony and counterpoint, orchestration, choral arranging, rhythmic pattern studies, composing, some improvising. Uh, he was truly a one-stop shop. And uh, he passed away at the age of 91 and wrote a book Thankfully, his wife sent me a copy. It's like 626 pages long uh, with basically most of his life's teachings in there. Thank God I have a copy of that book. Wow. But I, I got saved at the age of 17 when I was a senior in high school. And um, so this December will be 30, let me see. It will be, okay, two from nine. 
37 years or 39 years I've been saved, or 38 years, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, I'm usually really mentally sharp and really <laughs> on it, but for some reason, after all this traveling, all these days, and all these meetings, <laughs> anyway, I've been saved since I, yeah, I've been saved since I was 17, and yeah. uh, been, I've been involved in music ministry since I was 17. And uh, that was in 19, you know, I was saved in 71. So I will be saved 38 years in December and got involved 40, in music I think ministry. That's, John, I think it's 48. Because I, I got saved in 78. Oh, I'm sorry. It <laughs> is 48. It is 40. You can tell I'm tired. You can tell. It is 48 years. That's quite a while, isn't it? That's, that's, that's so, a, I think uh, that's a mileage on your belt. Yes, I do. And uh, I've seen a lot. I've come through a lot of musical styles over the years. I've learned how important it is to stay contemporary. But, but even way beyond that, it's important to be connected to our Heavenly Daddy and to Heaven to bring forth His sounds, regardless of what sounds are popular in the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, I am not about pleasing people's ears with contemporary sounds. The sounds that come out of Heaven are they're timeless. They come out of an, a, a realm that is not of this world. And people are, I find, are very attracted to it. Now, admittedly, my playing has been influenced by a lot of different uh, sounds from many artists and, you know, the 60s and 70s sound, but still, still, there is a very noticeable sound of heaven in this music. And I can say that without fear of being uh, accused. Of, well, if they want to accuse me of being proud and arrogant, that's up to them. I don't really care. But uh, I, what I recognize and realize is it's not about me at all. Right. It's, about what, it's about what our heavenly daddy wants to release through me. So I am one that believes that we should boldly decree and declare what God has given us to release into the earth in order to advance his kingdom. That's good. So, so what he's given to me is a sound. And uh, David Vancouvering came into my life in 2009. I had sent him a couple of CDs about eight, mo uh, eight months previous to that in 2008. And he called me on the phone around May the 11th, 2009. It was 6.09 in the morning, and we talked for 50 minutes. I can remember where I was standing. When I saw his name appear on my phone as his telephone call came in, I thought, wow, this is amazing. So I'd heard him teaching for months via teaching CDs through the Elijah List. Yeah. And I heard him talk about the periodic table of elements frequencies. And I heard him talk about an instrument. It's really a one of a kind. It's not available to the public. Neither is the software that he introduced me to. It's no longer, it can no longer be found for sale uh, on the internet. It's, it's under copyright and I do not reveal it to anyone because he told me the first time he showed it to me, don't show this to anyone. And you knew David and you knew how authoritative he was. <laughs> yeah. And even saying something gently carried a lot of weight, didn't it? It true. did. Yes, it did. So uh, I started recording with the periodic table of elements in March of 2011. Now that's well over eight years ago. I have released 24 CDs as of September last month, and nine of them are embedded with frequencies of the periodic table of elements that were checked by ac for accuracy by physicists. David Vancouvering testified that he heard those sounds in heaven very adamantly, called them the voice of God speaking. And I have received many testimonies from people, some being physically healed, uh, just many different kinds of testimonies. So a threefold cord is not easily broken. And I named three different things associated with those frequencies that have been embedded into the music. Now, the frequencies that I record with and the music are two completely different entities. I received three downloads of CDs from heaven, two in 2008. I'm sorry, 
two in 2009 and one in 2011. Pausing here, and uh, just, John, I can pause you for a second. Two yes. things. One, for people that um, maybe aren't real familiar with some of the conversation we're having right now about the periodic table, and there's maybe a little bit more insight about David Vancouvering, but David Vancouvering uh, is a musicologist, uh, besides being a scientist with uh, 600 patents, he is actually, uh, he and, uh, uh, is it Moog? Uh, Ray Moog was it that invented the Moog synthesizer? But anyway, mm -hmm. David Vancouvering is an incredible scientist and musicologist. And uh, actually, he's a he, he actually invented the first CD player, an optical disc, as he was working for NASA. But uh, the point is, he's highly trained as a physicist and a musician. Uh, but he died and went to heaven. And when he was in heaven, what he heard in music was different than what he was familiar with in all of his music training. And... Uh, he realized uh, that every element, now when we talk about the periodic table, some of you might not know what that means, but what, John, is it 103 or 108 elements now? 118 right now. Okay, uh, that, that's, what, that's the modified list, right? I mean, kind of uh, pure elements. It's being added, it's yeah. being added to, uh, yeah. But, but anyway, the point is every element, gold, silver, iron, nickel, hydrogen, oxygen, has its own frequency. And right. David was able to identify that frequency. Do you know, John, is it the atomic frequency that he's using? Okay, can I step in for a moment? Please. Uh, Dave, David Vancouvering actually did not calculate those frequencies. Okay. He knew, he knew, he knew the man who did. Okay. Uh, and the man who did is a, a, a very brilliant music professor on the East Coast. And David was friends with him and worked with him. Uh, but David himself uh, did not calculate those, those frequencies. And um, he, I have an audio where he talked about the frequencies of the periodic table of elements. David very adamantly in this audio clip, you can find it on my SoundCloud page, soundcloud.com. Type John Tussey, J-O-H-N, T as in Tom, U-S-S-E-Y in the search box. And you'll find my soundcloud.com page. And go down to where it says excerpt. And you'll see it's from David Vancouver from the Elijah List. It's about two and a half minutes long. And that's where he talks about hearing the periodic table of elements frequencies in heaven. And he called them the voice of God speaking. Mm -hmm. That's good. And uh, he worked with Robert Moog in the early days of the Moog synthesizer. And he had input into the early development of that instrument. And what a lot of people might not know is that David Vancouvering was the man who opened up, who, who was actually the salesman who brought that instrument throughout the country and maybe into 26 or 27 nations Wow! and introduced that, that instrument that forever changed the music industry, the Moog synthesizer. He introduced that to the world and he had so much fun while he was traveling around and, and demonstrating it. Uh, you know, he was, he was a great teacher and, you know, I, I like to talk about him as I'm sure you do as if he's still alive, because he still is. He just changed realms. Yep. He went from earth to heaven. But I hope that answers your question. Yes. So anyway, I mean, what I just want to add to that. So what, you, what God gave uh, David Vancouvering and then others that worked with him is how to play, literally, the music of heaven. And, and John, that's what you have, right? That's what he mentored you in in how to do that. And can you give me an idea of people what that might look like? Is it well, a special instrument? I, I personally, you know, he, he did call the frequencies of the periodic table of elements that he heard being played in an auditorium by an instrument that a number of people had input into. He called that the voice of God speaking. Um, 
you know, frequencies or individual tones. When it comes to music, that's a different entity. Uh, I, you know, as I said before, I have received three downloads of CDs from heaven. The first set of downloads was 26, the second was 50, and the, and the third was 100. So I received a total of 176 CD downloads from heaven, and I've only released 24 albums right now. <laughs> John, can I, that happened. John, let me pause for a second, because this is fascinating. What does that look like when you say you get a download? I mean, is it, uh, can, you, can you expound upon that? What, 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 what does that look like? Well, I, I did see the first two, but I didn't see the third download. I was in a Patricia King Glory School uh, the last three days of February 2009. And during the last session, when we had ascended, I had my hands raised. And at the same time, I saw myself playing a shiny nine or 10 foot black grand piano. And I was sitting and, you know, I was playing it and we were the piano, myself, the piano bench, we were all on a white cloud. And as I'm beholding this, I was swaying back and forth as if in a spiritual form, not physical, more fluid type, but I'll call it spiritual. And so as I was watching this and had my hands raised, Jesus placed a CD in my right hand, which had started to tingle before he put the CD there. So I placed my right hand over my heart and raised my hands again. And this time I knew they were numbered. I just couldn't see the numbers really clearly. I couldn't see them clearly, but the numbers were there. 25 more CDs came very rapidly into my right hand. So I put my right hand over my heart. Uh, later that year, it was maybe the month of May, I went to uh, visit friends in Media, Pennsylvania during a visit to New Jersey. And my friends have a um, video production company. And they're both very strong Christians. And so we're standing outside near their uh, large video truck in their driveway, holding hands, praying. And their names are Butch and Ina Stockton. The wife, Ina, is from uh, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, and she's a very strong prayer general. And Butch is really strong in the spirit, and he is very technically um, knowledgeable and also an amazing uh, first-class bass player so we're holding hands praying and all of a sudden i knew it was 50 50 cds dropped down through the top of my head i saw it while we're praying so now i have 76 cd downloads two years later i go back to butch and Nina stockton's house in media pennsylvania a great place to receive from god on their property in media and i'm standing around a desk close to a desk rather where i will be filmed for a tv half hour TV show. And I got a sense this time, I didn't see it, but I got a sense, an impression that I had received 100 more CD downloads. And I believe my friend Butch confirmed that number. Now I have 176 CD downloads from heaven. And when you receive something from heaven, you know. Uh, I received something from David Vancouvering the day he passed away. And I also received the piano playing mantle of Kim Clement the day he passed away. And there's stories associated with both of those if you'd like me to share them. Um, within the time frame, if we can come back to that, because I want a couple more things I want to make sure that we cover. But sure. I, would, I would love to hear about those mantles, but I want to respect your time as well. Uh, well, perhaps we can go a little longer. Okay. The, the, uh, the downloads is on, on that one. So you got 100. You got, a hundred downloads. Okay, so it, it, it's like I, I'm curious, and I mean, I I think I know the answer, but I want to help people that are are watching to get understand it. Do you do you then sit at the piano and 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 pull it out, or do you know the content of all those already? Well, this is what my friend Gary Beaton described it like. When, well, first of all, when I sit down to record my albums, uh, usually all the tracks are spontaneous as they're recorded. Sometimes I'll have a musical idea to start out with. Sometimes it's just taking a step off the diving board and starting to play after I hit the record button. But my friend Gary Beaton 
described it like this. It's like unzipping a zip file. And when you, when you click on a zip file and it unzips, whatever is inside that zip file um, comes, you know, into uh, a set of files. Yeah. There might be, it might be a 10 files or whatever, but you know, it's, you know, like I said, the, the spontaneity of the music coming forth as it's being recorded is like, you know, having pouring through mm. my hands and fingers into the keyboard, going into Logic Pro to the sounds I have chosen to be played. It's, um, it's a supernatural thing. Oh, my. And, and really and truly, the downloads are already inside of me. But at the same time, there is a heavenly flow. I don't know how to fully ex describe it. And some things are not easy to describe when it comes to the supernatural, as I'm sure you're well aware. But when you're involved in it, you just, you have a knowing of what's going on. Yeah, it's a flow. And might not be able to describe exactly everything to a T, but you have an inner knowing of what's going on. Yes. I hope that helps. Yes, very good. Now, when people play your music, uh, people that have, have died and went to heaven, I think I've heard you say that when they hear your music, they say, this sounds like what I heard in heaven. Is that an accurate? Actually, I don't remember saying that. But um, this is what I was told by a friend of mine who knows Kat Kerr. Kat Kerr has been to heaven many, many times since 1996, I believe, many times. She's written books about it. She has shared much about it. And uh, when she shares about it, there's so much love and so much grace and beauty. It's very, very... Uh, very attractive to hear what she has to share. She has greatly supported my music. She has promoted it at least twice on, on her Facebook lives and has played it 24 seven in her office for, I don't know how long if she's still doing that. Um, this is what I was, I, as I remember, this is what I was told by someone who knows her. And when she came to the healing rooms, international conference center, in Spokane, I believe she told my friend or my friend heard her say it was the closest thing she heard to the heavenly music. Mm. Uh, somebody else told me after hearing me play the piano in, in a conference that it was the closest thing that they'd heard in heaven. And my, my heart's desire has been for the music to have a very deep impact into people's lives. Uh, I have no desire to record entertaining type music, but music that carries a very strong depth of ministry. And because it's instrumental music, it goes across all the lines. It goes, you know, new age people are attracted to it. Unbelievers are attracted to it. All kinds of people are attracted to it. And I'm really happy about that because we need to reach those that need Jesus. Yes. So my music is not just reaching believers and it's reaching a lot of believers. It is. And I'm glad for that. I'm glad for the ministry value in the music. Very, very thankful to God for that. Give him all the glory always. At the same time, I'm really thankful to know that it's going outside the realm of just the Christian arena into what you would call the secular arena. And I'm, I'm really, really uh, happy about that. You know, on that note, you know, something we talked about last week that I wanted to visit with today on, uh, and then we can maybe take a little side venture on what you just said, but you could have two people play a Christian song, How Great Thou Art. Mm -hmm. One person is in love with God and anointed, and the other person is a heathen playing Christian music. Yeah. The, the person 
uh, that's listening to that music is going to have a different experience by each one of those musicians. One is going Absolutely. to, one's going to have a positive, one's just going to have an experience, right? Exactly. Yes. You know, something that I learned from David Vancouver, along the lines of what you just shared, is if a recording is anointed at the time it's being recorded, yeah. a praise album, an instrumental album, every time you play it back, He, God, Holy Spirit, shows up live. So the anointing that you experience from the playback of the music is a live experience. It is not a recorded experience. Yeah. And I really loved hearing that. It makes so much sense. It makes so much spiritual sense, <laughs> if yeah. I can put it like that. Yeah, he taught me that as well. And I've carried that as one of the most valuable lessons. And it's interesting. Uh, I, I do a weekly mentoring class for a, a, an online discipleship program I have. Mm -hmm. And there's one session, it's called, uh, and it's on YouTube. Uh, you can check it out sometime under uh, our YouTube channel, Living Supernaturally. Uh, but uh, session 14, if you type session 14, I recorded that probably six years ago. And mm -hmm. I sat down to do my regular teaching, but the, the, the Holy Spirit just came in so strong. Yeah. And the, the power of God, I mean, it, it was so strong in the studio that day. And uh, I couldn't preach. All I can do is, is pray and, and weep and, and, and pray in tongues for a whole hour. And it's amazing. I mean, people will today, five years later, play that session and have the same experience like what you just said. Like, Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, so, you know, going back to this, the, what we talked about last week that I wanted to kind of focus on, because this is so powerful, uh, not just for the, the quality of, uh, and the value of what you're doing, but just as a, uh, a, a kind of a teaching here for other people, that the intent of the heart of the musician is going to be recorded in the music. Yes. So, and, you know, be, beyond the frequencies, beyond the tunings, the intention uh, of, the, of the heart and um, what is infused into the music from the heart of the one recording is really the most important thing. Because you can listen to beautiful music on YouTube. But if there's a wrong spirit behind it, I, I pick it up right away. I, I'll turn it off, of course. I can't, I don't want anything to do with that. You know, if there's an, a deceptive spirit behind it, and that's what it is. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new age type stuff on YouTube. And that's extremely deceptive. And um, there are evil spirits motivating and, and uh, inspiring people and attached to what they're doing and it comes through what they're doing exactly and like i said I, I can pick it up but if you have someone connected to the holy spirit who loves the lord and whose heart is that what they're doing you know is embedded with the love of our heavenly daddy that makes all the difference that's going to come through in the music it's going to be imprinted it's going to exude through the speakers when it's replayed. Exactly. And, the, and that's, that's a real problem, as I see it, for young people today that are, are listening to secular music, that there may be nothing wrong. I mean, there's no vulgarity. There's nothing wrong with the music. It's just a, a tune. But that artist in, that's living in sin and in and, 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 and worldliness and, and wickedness in some cases are involved in, in occult activities. Yeah, some of them are, yeah. You're, 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 going, you're going to be contaminated, as I see it, 
buy that music the same as you're going to be contaminated in a good way with the anointing. Yeah, you know, you've got a very good point there, Dave. Very good point. Well, I think it was David Vancouvering that said to me that uh, the, the anointing is going to be like an infectious disease that won't be contained. Hmm. You know, it's just it, in a positive way, obviously. But when people really get touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, it changes you. Absolutely. Everything changes. Do you remember that that song that Kathy Tricoli sang back in the 80s, Everything Changes? Yes. Yes. That's what it reminds me of. When, when revelation comes, everything changes from that moment on. Yes. And uh, it's it's just so refreshing and never stops because the Lord is such a fountain of inf infinite wisdom and knowledge and, and ideas and creativity that we're just swimming in a pool and an ocean of his life and uh, being empowered by that and inspired and with all of these things that he has for us. And there's just a never ending flow. Christians uh, that understand this are some of the most creative people in the world. Yes. Continually bringing forth fresh revelation, fresh ideas, fresh ways of expression it's amazing it is well yeah a couple of things i want to come back to you, you mentioned about different mantles that uh you've been graced to pick up on but before yeah. we before we get too far along i, I do want to really encourage people to get your music and uh, thank so you we need to uh let them know how to do that john yes uh they can visit my website johntussie.com www.johnt is in Tom, U S S E Y dot com. There are, um, well, there's a, um, a lot of links, actually, menus, excuse me. There are menus uh, under the banner um, of my website, and one of them is Buy John's Music, and you click on that. And there are other menus like uh, music for emotional healing music to calm babies and children music for sleeping and you can there are links on those pages that you when you open them up that will take you either to cd baby or itunes um, i do recommend buying cds because they are the best audio quality the digital information on a cd is the biggest the digital information on MP3s is not as much. The size of an MP3 file is not as large as the size of a WAV file on a CD, which means there's digital information missing on an MP3. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. Some people can hear the difference. Some cannot. But uh, I do recommend CDs. However, you can still get benefit from this music by downloading the, you know, the MP3. Yes. To get the best benefit, you should use a really good sound system with a subwoofer to get the best benefit, the, the most benefit. However, again, I will say you can still get benefit from this music without a great sound system because I have testimony of it. Some people are listening to it with their iPads and phones. Uh, you know, I listen to it with my phone sometimes because that's the only thing that I have when I'm traveling. <laughs> but um, there is great benefit. You can infuse your water, your food, with these frequencies of the periodic table. All you have to do is put your food or your water close to where the speaker is, where the music is coming out, because water has memory. You can go to YouTube and, and type in water has memory and find some absolutely amazing videos about how water will even take on like if you drop a particular kind of flower in a glass of water and wait for a while, take a drop of water and put it under a microscope, you'll see the impression of that flower in the drop of water. Mm. So it's that. not only recording vibrations in the way of sound, but it's recording imagery. And our bodies are made up of 70 to 80% water. So that be, it behooves us to be watchful 
with what we speak, not only to others, but over our own bodies and our own souls and lives, because we do create our own atmosphere. That's good. That's good. And uh, I teach much in that very same vein. Back in, uh, well, like when, I, when I, I think it was when I, the year I met uh, David Vancouvering, I think it was 2005. Mm. Oh, okay. And it was kind of interesting because he heard that I was teaching on quantum physics somehow or another. And mm -hmm. he called me and said, hey, we got to get together and compare some notes. <laughs> My background, I mean, I have no science background. So everything that I was teaching came like what you said by download. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so God was giving me insight because my quest was understanding the supernatural. So yes. when yes. when we got together, it was such uh, it was so in incredibly exciting for me to compare notes as it would be, because he had the the factual <laughs> scientific experience to say, yeah, that's right, and things that God was showing me in the spirit and teaching. Yeah you know how things work but uh yeah i forgot where i was going with that where we started this conversation uh, it's really it's really cool how god can reveal things to people that don't know anything at all perhaps even about what they're writing down or receiving as far as the yeah. technical aspect of it but god is god and he can i mean he can just reveal and and give all kinds of things to us mm -hmm. that are amazing, mm -hmm. even without the technical training and knowledge that would be helpful to have to understand it. Yes. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter with him because he bypass. He can bypass all that very easily and just give us things. You know, and you know, pausing there a second just to encourage people that are watching that I, I believe. I mean, we're in a season where God wants to download. He wants to give witty ideas. He, you know, knowledge in, in the natural is increasing. And yeah. he wants to do the same thing in the spiritual realm and, and un download or unload as it would be mysteries and inventions and, and concepts. Uh, and, and, and John, you're such a perfect example of all these CDs that God downloaded to you that is, is there anything you might want to, uh, I, I had a question in my mind that I was that I meant to ask about David Vancouvering then in my meeting with him, but is there anything that, that you want to pass on to people about your time with David and, and things that he might have imparted to you that that's stand out? Well, you know, I had a five and a half month mentor, mentoring period, um, three of three times when he came to Hawaii within that five and a half month period and over the phone. And it was a very special five and a half month season for me because just because of who this man was and still is and what he carried. And he had a very strong, uh, he had a very strong belief in, introducing me to this technology that I used to record with the periodic table. Uh, he was very sure that he was to introduce it to me. He also introduced it to one other person on the earth named Corey Pryor, who used to be the keyboard players for the newsboys and Corey lives in Australia. Corey has released two CDs with the periodic table of elements frequencies, and I've released nine. And uh, Corey is a great guy very gifted, very talented, very knowledgeable in music. And, uh, you know, when the day that David Vancouver died, I believe it was the same day. I saw him in the spirit. It's hard to explain. I, I, I just knew that I saw him. And um, before me, perhaps on some type of a table, there was something that looked like a necklace, but it wasn't a necklace. Instead of having a chain for the necklace, it had something that looked like a a rope that was, uh, you know, braided, a thin braided rope. Right. And upon, upon this rope, there were three re uh, stones or rocks in the shape of triangles. They weren't 
sharp edges, but rounded sort of. And they were pretty good size. And uh, I believe David looked down and I had the knowledge in my spirit that each stone represented something different. And this is what they represented. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Mm. And David wanted me to have this. Two months later, a young prophetic minister and pastor named Ben Lin came to Hawaii and gave me a prophetic word that I would finish the unfinished works of David B. Cooper. Wow. Now that was in 2000 and wait a minute. No, that was later. That was after he passed away, I believe. Now he passed away. Wait a minute. He did pass away in 2017 or what? No, it was 2018. He passed away. That's when Ben Lim came. It was after he passed away. Sorry. I was thinking 2017. Now, when Kim Clement passed away, I believe it was November 23rd on a Thanksgiving day in 2016, I had come home from my second Thanksgiving dinner, got out of the car, and I saw Kim Clement briefly in the sky with a mantle in the sky. And I knew in my spirit that I was supposed to put that mantle on. It, it, let's put it this way. It was being offered to me. So I quick walked across the street, opened the gate, closed the gate to the house where I live, raised my hands up high, took the mantle by faith, put it on, and went into the house. Didn't think too much about it. The next time I sat down to play the piano, the improvisation was very fluid and very deep and very, it just flowed in a deeper, more fluid manner than, than I was used to. And I knew that there was something very different. And that's when I believe the Lord revealed to me that he had given me the piano playing mantle of Kim Clement. Wow. It wasn't the prophetic mantle. It was the piano. That's my next question. Did, did that come with it? It was not. No, no, it was not the prophetic mantle. It was very clear. It was the piano playing mantle. Hmm. You mentioned so that mantle as well. I know that if he had not, I mean, excuse me, I know that if I had not put that on, he would have offered it to somebody else. That I also was very well aware of. And when he offers us something, we need to take it as soon as we can. Yes. And not hesitate. Just take it, receive it, and move onward with it because he has a purpose for it. And that purpose is advancing the kingdom of God in the earth. That's what all ministry is. No matter what you can think of, no matter what kind of ministry it is, it advances God's kingdom in the earth. Yeah. Well, that's what he wants. That's his desire. Jesus talked about the kingdom a whole lot. Yes. And uh, yeah. Well, you know, something, you know, we've only known each other a short time here, but. Yeah. <laughs> Less than a week. <laughs> <laughs> but something I, you know, I feel, I feel pretty sensitive most of the time to spiritual things. And there's not a lot of people that have the heart for the kingdom they might have a heart for ministry and yeah. and they might be anointed for ministry but the heart to advance the kingdom is a little different edge that you know i i'm recognizing you and i'm i'm, I'm i would guess that is why you know god you know you know had had kim do that because that was so his purpose You know, uh, Dave, I started to read, uh, I purchased four books by Miles Monroe on the kingdom of God, and I believe he has some of the finest, deepest, most revelatory teaching on the kingdom of God that you can find. Um, and he, he's very thorough and eloquent and excellent, just full of revelation. Have you ever read any, any of his books on the, on the kingdom of God? I've not read his books. I have listened to many of his audios. Yes. Uh, that was one of his specialties. Of course, purpose, speaking about purpose. Yes. Um, and I'm looking forward to going through all four of these books. I started the first one and I got into it reasonably. Um, and they're so rich. They're so powerfully uh, revelatory that, wow, I mean, th these are the types of books that you could read through five times and, and still get more and more and more and more and, and beyond that. But uh, I'm so thankful that uh, I started to read them. There's so many things that God is revealing today. There's so many, wow, 
there's just so much. I have a friend named Daniel Cook, who along with four other authors wrote a book called The Book of Eber. And each one of the five authors, authors, excuse me, contribute their understanding and revelation about each one of the 22 Hebrew letters, mm. along, along with some other things too. And I, I'm 22% Jewish and I have a lot of catching up to do in uh, the knowledge of Jewish things and feasts. And so I'm in the process of, of doing that. And, uh, you know, I do want to learn Hebrew. And um, because the Hebrew language is just amazingly revelatory when you look into how you know, the meanings of the letters, the living letters, as some call them. Yes. And, and the words that are formed by those letters and the landscape of meaning that exudes from just one word in Hebrew is yeah. just, it's a different world. Well, John, I did not, <laughs> I did not mark my top, my clock when we started. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I think we're probably, <laughs> we, had, we had so much going back and forth before we got started getting the technology synchronized. And when we started, I didn't, I started the recorder, but I didn't start the timer. But I, I We've been I, going for about 45 minutes. Okay, that's okay. So we're good. Uh, something I wanted to come back to uh, that we you mentioned to me in, in, in our, 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 our pre-call uh, time, because I asked you how your meetings have been. And yeah. you did these you know, eight meetings in nine days. And, and something you said is the Lion of Judah showed up. In each yeah, he did. And I, I, I'd like you to, uh, to help people understand when, when someone says something like that, what does that mean? What does it look like? And is it something that, you know, ordinary people can experience or, you know, what's your take on that? And, and I believe anybody can develop seeing in the spirit, just like we've developed hearing in the spirit. We're used to that. Most Christians that are, you know, have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and are into the place where they can hear the, they can hear the Holy Spirit or receive an inner impression or receive a thought that they know is from God. God speaks to us in different ways. That is so common. Why can't seeing in the Spirit be just as common? Yes. And I believe that the Lord is bringing us more and more into that. So, you know, I see the Lion of Judah coming into the room, but it's not like I'm seeing the people like in the same way I'm seeing the people in the room. It's a spiritual scene that I'm, I'm sorry, I can't fully describe how that is, but when you experience it, you know it. <laughs> and so it's a spiritual scene, you know, and uh, in one of the meetings, at least one, he had a, ground, a, a gold crown on, and uh, in at least two of the meetings, he was laying on the floor, wagging his tail. And in at least two of the meetings that I remember, he had a very calm, satisfied, delighted look on his face because he was with his children, whom he loves. Okay, and so, you know, I, I, I got to pause you for a second there because... Uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking you saw Jesus come in, but then when you said you saw him back in his tail, I thought, okay, I, I better clarify this. So when you say the lion of Judah, you're speaking of a, 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 a lion, real lion. A real lion. Yeah. Oh, that, yes. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. I saw him as the lion of Judah. You've probably seen uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, that movie that they based off of C.S. Lewis's book right. yes. from the Chronicles of Narnia. Yep. And you're probably familiar with Aslan, who represents Jesus Christ. Right? Exactly. He does. So, you know, and the Bible talks about the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I wasn't the only one that saw him, by the way. Okay. And I'm glad to tell you that. So <laughs> others did see him. Well, I think it's awesome. And, yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so, um, sometimes I've been on un, just undone and had to regain my composure after seeing him because it's been such an amazing experience. So did that happen while you were worshiping or I mean, while you were at the piano or 
Um, yeah, it, it happens a lot while I'm at the piano. And um, it's been hap I've, I've been seeing him come in to almost every meeting since last April. And is that like a year and a half? Yeah, I've done a good number of meetings since last April. And uh, I saw that maybe two and a half months. I saw that happen, I believe. So when he comes before in, before I, I ever went to California, yeah. Do, do, do you do you see him like just kind of walking up and down the aisles? Does he come and lay at the platform? Different things, yeah. You know, uh, jumping up on people. He jumped up on me, jumping on people, uh, running around real fast on top of the uh, of people, and. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, he has a ferocious love for us. It's beautiful. So when Just that's happening, what, what's is is the uh, are, are the people noticing it, or are they? I mean, you like, know, I I can't speak for all of them, but some people do see this, and some people like one pastor. I I told I I shared I saw him jump on the pastor, and that he was on top of the pastor, and the pastor had seen this. That's cool. So he verified it. Yeah, he verified. It. That's awesome. But like I said, when you see it, you know what you see. Absolutely. And nobody can take nobody can take that away from you. It doesn't matter if they believe it. Doesn't matter if they understand it. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, you know what happened. It's it's powerful. It's precious. It's beautiful. And the Lord has a purpose for those things. They're very encouraging, and uh, they're very fulfilling heart-wise to see and experience his power and his love. Awesome. Well, before we go, I want to come back to your music because, again, I want to encourage everybody to, to get some of it. I, I got the Heavenly uh, Soundscapes, is it? Is that your newest one? Yes, that, that's the newest one, yeah. Uh, there, I mean, obviously, there's so many to pick from. And you, when we talked last week, you suggested a couple. Uh, maybe you could give people just a little bit of an idea of where to start or why. I mean, you mentioned to me about the one about the DNA, and uh, I was curious too. You know, what do you see your music doing to DNA or and that one? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, there's lots of testimonies. If you go to YouTube, uh, John Tussie Music on YouTube, you will find testimonies of people that have been physically healed. And also, if you go to johntussie.com and click on testimonies, that's my website, you'll read uh, quite a number of testimonies. My uh, suggestion is that you pray over, listen to sound samples, and let Holy Spirit lead as to which CDs are best for you. Any CD that begins with the word frequencies has frequencies of the periodic table of elements embedded in them. Uh, two of them only have oxygen embedded in them. Uh, I did record two CDs with the solfeggio frequencies, and there's not time to explain that right now. Three CDs recorded at 444 hertz, and there's not really time to go into that either, sorry. And one CD <laughs> recorded at 432 hertz. Now, I recorded all of those CDs that I just mentioned since 2011. Um, uh, either recorded or re-released. The ones, uh, two of the ones recorded at 444 hertz were re-releases of albums that had been recorded at 440. And again, I don't have time to go into explaining about tunings and uh, a lot of misinformation out there, really, that I'm exposing uh, in my meetings. And if the folks are interested in contacting me about coming to do meetings for them, please go to my website, and click on the contact is either says contact john or contact it's uh, one of the menu items of my website i will be coming back to the uh the u.s mainland from hawaii next april and next september i already have meetings uh, booked for those times uh so i'm starting to book a year in advance but if you're interested in talking to me about the possibility of me coming uh, i do speak as well and teach on sound frequency and vibration, discovering the creative genius of God in you, the power of your words, and other things. Uh, and of course, I do flow with Holy Spirit. Um, uh, 
and play prophetically in all or, or most of the, the meetings, depending on the time frame and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, I would encourage you to get the music. I would encourage you to listen to testimonies on YouTube, and I would encourage you to read the testimonies on my website. I have received so many that, you know, I haven't even posted two very interesting ones. I forget which CDs it was uh, that were used, rather, that turned two mean cats into nice cats <laughs> by two different owners. It puts people to sleep like the, I, I get best sleep ever. You get a frequency cellular infusion every time you have the music on. Yes. Even if you feel it or not, it doesn't matter. The Lord revealed to me that these frequencies cleanse the DNA at the subatomic level. And if, uh, if you listen to the YouTube video that's 13 minutes and 26 seconds long, you will read that, te that, that prophetic download typed out on screen. And then another one typed out on screen at the end after the last testimony. Now, which YouTube videos? You have a lot of YouTube videos out there. So how would they uh, find that particular one? 13 minutes, 13 minutes and 26 seconds, they can read revelations that I received about this music. Okay, but how, how do they find that one specifically? John Tussie Music on YouTube. Okay, but Good. Like, and there's so many. John there. Tussie, John Tussie. Well, uh, well, actually, I just described it. It's 13 minutes and 26 seconds long. It's the only one that's 13 minutes and 26 okay. seconds long. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's how. That's the only. <laughs> that's the <laughs> only way they could find it. So it's not uh, because it's not because I can't give you the title of it right now. <laughs> I, I'm not. I might, you know, might not get it quite right, but. If they look at the time, it's very, very easy to look at the time of all the videos if you go on someone's YouTube page yes. and click on, the, click on the word video in the, menu in the menu bar. You see videos. Click on that. And all the videos available on that page will open into um, what are like thumbnail prints, thumbnail pictures, rather. And then you look at the times. Uh, one of my music videos has over 50,000 views right now, which I'm really happy about. Well, they're good. And that's how I started watching you, by the way. I mean, after I heard, oh, okay. after I heard you <laughs> interviewed on the Kingdom Encounter channel. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you. John, I want to just say a very special thank you. And uh, I've got, we've got to get together because, again, we talked last week about you creating a special piece for me. And oh, so that's right. We want to talk yeah. about that because I want to, I'd like you to do a 20 minute track for me to use in my meetings for meditation. Mm -hmm. But so we'll come back on that. Uh, Definitely. But yes. if you would be so kind, I'd love you to close out the session uh, with a prayer for the folks out there, however God may lead you. And yes. uh, everybody, uh, again, I just want to really encourage you to get this music. Uh, I really enjoy it. I really encourage you to get it. And it's, it's one, one of the things, one of the reasons I like it, besides of knowing the scientific and the spiritual value behind it, is it, it's not music you're going to recognize. Uh, so often when we meditate, you know, if there's a familiar tune playing, you, 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 you get sidetracked. When, when, mm -hmm. when there's no melody you recognize, you're able to more seriously just get it. Escape in the spirit, as I think of it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is all instrumental music. But uh, let's pray. Let's pray together. All right. Uh, our loving heavenly Daddy, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for being so uh, warmly uh, embracing among us right now. Mm -hmm. And we just pray that your presence will permeate through this time into everyone's heart and mind and body as they listen back to this time together. I pray, Lord, that everyone that needs healing will be healed and everyone that needs to be delivered will be delivered and every person that needs to be saved will be saved. And I pray that everybody that needs hope will receive hope and I pray that everyone that needs an answer will receive their answer. I pray that uh, the bondage of sin the bondage of poverty and the bondage of sickness 
is completely broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross and through his finished work paid for complete release from all of those things. We thank you so much, Jesus. And Daddy, God, we thank you for sending Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for being our intimate lover and friend and guide. Thank you so much for this time. And we bless you and we thank you, Jesus. And may all the people receive a gift from heaven as they're listening today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, John, again, thank you, everybody. I trust you've been blessed, refreshed, encouraged, and uh, have yourself a glorious uh, week. And we'll be back here with you uh, next week, Tuesday. Until then, God bless. Thank you.